Hi, my name is Omar Nadim. I'm from the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. This is an exciting year for patients that have precursor myeloma. So as you all probably know, there's patients that we identify that have the monoclonal proteins but don't yet have the damage associated with myeloma. And this entity called smoldering myeloma is patients that have more than 10% abnormal plasma cells in the marrow. It's a pretty heterogeneous population where some patients will develop myeloma, some patients won't. And we now have some tools that we can use in the clinic to identify patients that are at high risk for progression in the next two years. And there have been numerous trials looking at early intervention in these patients to see if we can actually prevent the damage, organ damage that occurs from multiple myeloma. So at this meeting, at the ASH meeting, we'll see the phase three results of the Aquila trial, which is showing benefit of single agent daratumumab versus observation in patients with high risk smoldering myeloma. And this trial improved progression free survival for these patients. And there's a trend towards actually improvement in overall survival. And that's the first time we've seen that in a while where you actually, you know, treat patients before they develop the disease and perhaps impact their outcomes to that level. Uh, but with single agent daratumumab, the response rate is about 60%. So, you know, about almost two, um, one third of patients don't respond to that agent. And then patients still do progress. So at that five-year mark, about 40% of patients still develop myeloma. So how can we do better has been an area that we've been trying to trying to understand and answer via some of the clinical trials. So we have some updates at this meeting looking at slightly different strategies for patients with high-risk smoldering myeloma. Uh, we have a trial, uh, first of its kind, looking at CAR T-cell therapy in these patients. So patients that are at high risk of um, developing myeloma can be enrolled into that trial. And we'll be sharing results of our safety run-in, which is the first six patients treated with Siltacel, which is an anti-BCMA CAR T-cell therapy product that is approved for patients with relapsed refractory myeloma and treating patients with no induction therapy where they go right into CAR T-cell therapy. Uh, we limited the amount of plasma cytosis patients should have at the time of enrollment to 40%, and the intent has been to really reduce the toxicities as much as possible. We also started with two different doses as part of the safety run, and one is a slightly lower dose at the 0.5 uh, dose. We have the standard dose is the 0.75 uh, times 10 to the 6 uh, per kilogram CAR T-cells, right? So we kind of started with the first three patients, the lower dose, escalated to the next three patients when we did not see any dose limiting toxicities, and all six patients went through without having any dose limiting toxicities with the CAR T-cell uh, therapy. We did see some of the expected toxicities with these agents. Uh, so because of the lymphodepletion that is necessary prior to CAR T-cell therapy, you do see some incidence of neutropenia, but thankfully we didn't see any evidence of uh, or any cases of febrile neutropenia. Uh, all patients did develop cytokine release syndrome as expected with these T-cell uh, therapies, but nobody developed grade 3 or greater uh, cytokine release syndrome. We had to give tocilizumab and dexamethasone to a handful of patients, but all of that was very manageable and there weren't any uh, issues for high-grade CRS you know, so far um, on this trial. Uh, there was one case of a Bell's palsy. One patient experienced that, which is, again, a known issue with some of these CAR T-cell therapy, but that was very transient resolved actually on its own uh, within two weeks. Overall, the safety profile for these first six patients looked quite good. And the great news is that these patients, all of them responded. Not only did they respond, they all have complete responses and all have MRD negative responses at 10 to the minus 6. And the first three patients we now have beyond the one-year mark, so they have sustained MRD negativity with this one-time therapy a year later. And the rest of the patients still uh, stay, uh, still remain with MRD negative disease at the time of their um, last follow-up, and nobody has developed any progression to avert myeloma to date. So, uh, you know, this is the first of its kind trial looking at this type of approach in these precursor patients where they have a much fitter immune system. And our hope is that this one-and-done treatment can prevent myeloma in their lifetime, but we need to see, obviously, longer follow-up, and the study is enrolling in the expansion cohort um, at this time.